Hello, BMFox here and welcome to the Axis Doctrine build order. This video has been requested a lot and was long overdue. I have divided the video into different chapters. Feel free to uh, skip chapters or to only watch the chapters that interest you the most. So I'm gonna start by explaining the different doctrines. Secondly, I'm gonna discuss the different doctrine unit bonuses, different early game rush strategies. After that, I'm gonna dive into the topic of motorized infantry versus armored cars. And after that, I'm gonna discuss the axis build order briefly. And then finally, I'm gonna get into the topic more detailed by using the images from the ultimate beginner's guide in the chapters early game and mid game and late game. So let's go! When you've chosen a country you have noticed that some countries have other doctrines. There are four doctrines in the game. In this game I am playing Axis and Axis is all about power. Their units get 15% more hit points meaning they have 15% more health. So they're the more difficult to kill and they also deal 15% extra damage. That is pretty cool. This makes Axis the perfect doctrine for aggressive early gameplay. They have a production cost of an additional 10%. So units are more expensive. Axis is a favorite doctrine by beginners because well, you have uh, way much power in the early game with your starting units. You deal more damage which gives you an additional security and the tank range from Axis is pretty good and beginners tend to love tanks. However, with their additional production costs, the economy playing Axis is a bit harder to master. The second doctrine is Allies Doctrine which is all about optimization. They can produce their units 30% faster, their research time and cost is 25% faster and cheaper, and their upgrade cost and time for units, so if you level them up, is 20% faster and 20% cheaper but as a downside allies doctrine they move 10% slower so if you're axis and you attack an allies player then you're gonna deal 15% more damage than the allies player and you're gonna move 10% faster that is a good advantage then we've got Comitern. Comitern is all about quantity their units are 15% cheaper and each unit costs resources of daily upkeep and so the upkeep cost for Comitern is 30% cheaper so they can spam large armies and maintain them easily which makes the combination with economy much more simple however they also get a buff they deal 10% damage and as Axis has 15% more damage 15% more hit points, their units are harder to kill and there's a damage gap of 25%. You deal 25% more damage, that is great. You're gonna be less confronted with the Pan-Asian uh, Doctrine as those are only played on larger maps like the 50 player Pacific or the 100 player World at War. You can also see them on the 30 player historical map. Panation is all about surprise, they move 20% faster, they have an additional view range of 30% and they get an additional terrain bonus of 20% for all units that get terrain bonuses. So for example, an armored car gets 50% bonus in the planes, well a Panation armored car is gonna get 70% terrain bonus, which is pretty cool. However, they've got a buff, they have 10% less hit points, so their units are easier to kill. So if you attack a Pan-Asian player, make sure that you attack in a terrain where your units are in the advantage, so that the Pan-Asian units can't get the advantage of their terrain bonus. And there's a 25% gap in between the hit points, so your units are way more harder to kill. So if you manage to lock a Pan-Asian army into melee combat, they're gonna dwindle down fast. Each doctrine also gets unit bonuses or nerfs. In the case of Axis Militia, research upgrades are one or two days later available. Then again, Militia is a slow defensive unit and as Axis is an offensive doctrine, I don't recommend using them unless you want to use them to defend your core provinces, but you can also use them to stack them together with your railroad guns because they're cheap and they are the second slowest unit in the game after railroad guns, so they are a very good alternative to protect your railroad guns. 
guns, no bonuses for infantry, but then we have motorized infantry. They are absolutely lethal for access doctrine. They move 15% faster and they're already pretty fast. And they also deal 15% more damage versus unarmed units and their research upgrades are sooner available. Access doctrine is the only doctrine that can produce a motorized infantry at day one. All the other doctrines is day two. Also a small bonus for mechanized infantry, commandos later available in the ordinance tab also artillery later available but then we have the then we have the axis anti-air which is the best anti-air in the game they deal 15% bonus against heavy armor and also 15% versus planes because axis anti-air basically are also kind of anti-tank units you get with 15% additional hit points and 50% damage versus all units of the axis doctrine this makes the axis anti-air absolutely lethal also upgrades for sp anti-air are sooner available no bonuses for armored cars or light tanks but then the medium tank the medium tanks for axis are absolutely amazing they move 15 percent faster have another 10 percent hit points upgrades are sooner available than other doctrines medium tanks should always be a part of your strategy if you're playing axis also heavy tanks get a access a bonus heavy tank research is today sooner available but more importantly they deal 10 percent additional damage versus all units however they are slow and if you meet an experienced player that is good with artillery units then they will just be able to dance around you with faster moving artillery and they're just gonna shoot and scoot you're never gonna be able to catch them personally i am a big fan of medium tanks as they are the perfect compromise between the speed of a light tank and the damage output and the bulkiness of a heavy tank in the air branch the interceptor still is pretty good for access even though he doesn't get a bonus as you have your access doctrine bonuses you can even fight off the famous interceptors from the pan -Asians. even though the pan -Asians deal 15% more damage you have your 15% extra damage output from your doctrine and as pan -Asians have 10% less health you 15% more health access interceptors have 25% more unit health than pan -Asian. and so you can fairly easily win against pan -Asian interceptors even though they have a bigger range they are faster and deal extra damage also the attack bomber is a pretty good unit for axis they deal in 15 percent extra damage versus an armored unit and versus heavy armor this is not only the perfect unit to counter heavy armor targets but also for unarmored targets and so the axis attack bomber is kind of a tactical bomber and attack bomber all in one and if you got the strategical bombers even though they don't get a doctrine bonus like allies they might have less range but they've got the same same amount of hit points and they deal more damage versus buildings this makes the axis strategical bomber very dangerous nevertheless in the naval tab only submarines get damage in honor of those famous wolf packs from world war ii they deal 15 percent more damage versus all ships move 15 percent faster so you can fairly easily hunt down units from other doctrines especially allies but you can uh, also try to catch the panacea no further bonuses for the navy which is why i don't bother making navy with axis only subs and axis aircraft carriers even get a nerf in the secret branch no bonuses for the rocket artillery branches however the railroad gun is absolutely amazing for axis and should always be a part of your strategy you can start researching them at day four instead of day six for the other doctrines you have an additional range of 10 percent which makes it possible for axis railroad guns to to even outrange battleships they also move 10 percent faster which means that axis railroad guns can go toe to toe with the panasian doctrine they might be 10 percent slower in the end but they have the 10 percent bigger attack range and of course the hit points difference of 25 percent also axis rockets get a 15 percent bonus versus all units however i never use them as they are single use i personally feel it is like a waste however if you have have a rocket and you manage to take down the air base of your enemy when he is refueling then it can be a game winning move but then the rocket fighter for access is absolutely amazing you get an additional 15 percent versus all planes plus a 15 percent extra speed rocket fighters are already fast but access rocket fighters are extremely fast combine that with already the access doctrine bonuses and
and it is just a freakingly good unit that Axis should always produce in the late game to keep that air dominance in the skies. No bonuses for nuclear research but then again personally I never go nuclear because it makes you a target. If you go nuclear and you've got your first nukes players are gonna be afraid of you and they will gang up on you but most importantly the research is just too much, too expensive, too long and it's gonna put you on a back foot in all the other army branches and it's gonna result in having a weaker army, weaker navy, weaker air force compared to your enemies and what you can win with your nuclear you will lose in warfare with your other units they can be a game changer they, you can actually change a losing deck of cards into a winning game with a couple of well-placed nuclear weapons however in my personal experience i've noticed that if you are active in this game usually the games are going to end before you can start fooling around with nuclear weapons so personally i would recommend not use them especially x as it is already an expensive doctrine. So there are three early game rush strategies for Axis. The first one is a motorized infantry rush where you're gonna produce a lot of motorized infantry and attack the enemy. However, I really wouldn't do that. Why not? I am going to discuss in the fourth chapter motorized infantry versus armored cars. But even though that a motorized infantry is a good unit for Axis and they can unlock it at day one instead of day two, Two, they are pretty expensive and basically you are going to waste and damage a lot these very expensive units and you're gonna cripple your economy by doing so but if you want to more on the subject just uh, watch this chapter motorized infantry versus armored cars i guess second or early game rush strategy is going for artillery with or not with the support of anti-tank units however artillery units they cost a lot they cost a thousand five 500 goods it's a lot in the early game you're gonna run out of goods way faster than you're gonna run out of manpower you're gonna consume so much goods that you're not gonna have the resources to construct uh, recruitment offices and with access your units are expensive you really need those recruitment offices not to mention that artillery is pretty weak in the early game because they counter heavy armored units but there are no heavy armored units in the game and artillery they deal a little damage to unarmored units and so any player that uses for an artillery Artillery rush early game strategy will get destroyed by the first player he meets that has produced rocket artillery because rocket artillery they counter unarmored units and artillery is yes an unarmored unit not the best of strategies lastly you have the armored cars light tank rush that is an overpowered rush let me tell you that i'm not gonna go deeper into the topic because i'm covering the subject in the motorized infantry this armored cars chapter and in this build order i am going to showcase the armored cars light tank strategy let's go next chapter if you have watched the Axis Doctrine video or you are a little familiar with the Axis Doctrine then you know that motorized infantry is a very good unit and Axis Doctrine is the only doctrine that has it at day one. However, you need a level 2 barracks to be able to produce them without a production time penalty. Just like armored cars, they are anti-unarmored and anti-stealth, however they are offensive instead of defensive. They deal 7.8 damage against unarmored units and 5.2 in defense. Motorized infantry has the strength of normal infantry and adds additional speed and a high view range to it in which it also reveals stealth units as an offensive units it is best used to conquer cities because infantry well they get bonuses in cities. However motorized infantry is an unarmored unit whereas armored cars are light armored units. However with axes I choose not to produce motorized infantry but armored cars instead. Why? Because well you start the game with a lot of infantry and infantry is very good against unarmored units. They deal 5.3 hit points in defense and they counter unarmored units like motorized infantry. So if you attack infantry with motorized infantry you're gonna take more counter damage and your units are gonna lose health way faster than if you use armored cars. As you can see 
Infantry, Infantry and Defense, they deal 5.3 defense against motorized infantry, but against armored cars, they only deal 2.6 damage. That's the half. So as with the armored cars, you receive half of the damage, your units, they will last way longer and be able to deal more damage. As you can also see, they're quite expensive on the food and on the manpower, so they're more expensive than armored cars and they drop in health way faster. And as regular infantry gets an additional 50% bonus in cities, they can really do some damage against motorized infantry. So for this reason, I prefer to use armored cars right over here instead of motorized infantry. Now, if you compare the stats of armored cars and motorized infantry, then you can see that in a first glance, motorized infantry seems to be superior compared to armored cars. Motorized infantry has 7.8 attack compared to armored cars who only have 3.5 attack. That's less than the half. A motorized infantry has 5.2 defense whereas armored cars has 5.3 defense which is only a minor difference. However in Dexter's Call of War battle calculator I can easily simulate what the impact is of the different armored classes and the difference of attack and defensive stats. So Doctrine A Axis, Motorized Infantry Level 1, 5 units, compared to Axis Infantry Level 1 in Urban Terrain in Core Provinces, 2 units. Let's see how the motorized infantry fare. Motorized infantry have lost 31.7% in HP. You can see how many resources that represents. Now let's change this into armored cars and let's run it again. You can see that the armored cars have only lost 17.9 hit points. So even though they deal less damage, in the end, you're gonna save a lot of resources because you're gonna have less losses. And this is knowingly that armored cars, well, they don't get any bonus in cities. So now let's uh, run this again. And now let's say that instead of urban, we are on the planes and also the infantry are on the planes. They're there we go. So uh, armored cars, let's start the battle. The armored cars now only lost 9.85% health. Now let's compare that to motorized infantry. Start a battle. Then you can see that motorized infantry has lost 21.1%. So in general, we could say that motorized infantry is going to take twice as much damage versus infantry compared to armored cars. Even though they have a superior battle stats, it doesn't matter. The motorized infantry here of course they took less damage because regular infantry don't have any bonuses on the planes whereas motorized infantry has 25% a bonus but armored cars they just simply outshine motorized infantry if it comes to battling against early game units like infantry. Another reason why to produce armored cars instead of motorized infantry is because it's way more cheaper way better for your economy. Let's have a look at the numbers. So armored cars research I'm gonna ignore it because you need to research armored cars mandatory if you want to produce tanks and every access player is going to produce tanks right so that you need to research in any case however if you go for armored cars instead of motorized infantry you don't need to research motorized infantry so uh the research for motorized infantry is a uh, 2700 food 650 goods 650 oil and 4950 dollars of course to produce motorized infantry you need a barracks right so barracks costs 2000 food 1100 goods 500 steel and 3600 cash but of course motorized infantry is a tier 2 unit so you also need a barracks level 2 if you don't want to have a production time penalty so barracks level 2 costs 2650 food 1450 goods 650 steel and 4800 cash of course you could opt to build a two level 1 barracks that would be a bit cheaper but then you lose a city to produce a other units right because you should specialize each city in one unit branch in order to save resources that brings up a total of 7350 food 3200 goods 1150 steel 650 oil and 13350 money that is a lot of resources man and then you haven't even started producing motorized infantry can you imagine now i have ignored the research for 
regular infantry as in my build as you should always do you should research infantry level one so that you can upgrade them in the game and so what i prefer to do instead of producing motorized infantry is with all that food goods and metal that i save up i can build recruitment centers right if you compare that with the price for a recruitment station you can see that you can easily build three recruitment stations even four if you use the excess money to buy more goods so while other players raise their resources on research and on barracks level one and two i'm gonna be constructing four recruitment stations and i'm gonna have more manpower to produce new armies and then finally to produce motorized infantry you need a thousand four hundred food 350 goods a thousand three hundred manpower 340 oil and a thousand four hundred money i mean that is a lot a lot of food for every motorized infantry that another player produces I can build another recruitment center so you can actually see it like this if you don't go for 10 motorized infantry but you go for 10 armored cars then you get about eight recruitment offices for free i can sell the food excess to buy the goods i need and bam eight recruitment offices for free plus 10 armored cars that beats any motorized infantry rush spoken of motorized infantry rush armored cars can counter motorized infantry rushes so going for armored cars it has only upsides and no downsides the only downside I can think of is that it can be countered with anti-tank, but then anti-tank you can take them out with your regular infantry units, so that's fine. This is the moment you have all been waiting for the Axis Doctrine build order, right? So basically, in the early game, you're going to produce armored cars and light tanks. These units, they don't cost a lot of goods, so you're also going to be able to construct recruitment offices early on to boost your manpower to be able to pop out more units. This strategy only requires two tank plans and not a lot of research, so you're going to save a lot of resources that you can use elsewhere. However, to make this strategy, strategy viable you also are going to need air units you are going to need to produce interceptors to protect your airspace especially against allies doctrine that will not tactical bombers at day one and you're also going to produce subs in a naval tab however you're not obliged to produce subs because you can also opt for the naval bomber and the naval bomber does need steel to be produced so if you don't have a lot of steel rural provinces then you might be off with naval bombers in the early game Armored cars and light tanks are a perfect early game rush because armored cars they counter unarmored units which are basically all your starting units, infantry and anti-air. So it's a very viable rush strategy. You can really overpower your enemy with it. You can move in at a high speed and your enemy is not going to have the chance to get organized especially if your armored cars are also stacked with light tanks light tanks they're gonna take care of light armored units so if you have other players that are producing armored cars your light tanks are gonna take care of those easily however to make this unit valuable you're gonna have to follow it up with the production of rocket artillery you can produce a stack of 10 rocket artillery and you can stack them with uh, 10 infantry an armored car and your starting anti-air that will give you a very solid Solid start in the game and you're gonna be able to dominate a player who went for regular artillery you're gonna have a moderate use of goods so you're gonna be able to construct a lot of recruitment offices that will serve you well throughout the game at a2 you're also going to be able to unlock a medium tanks but if you produce a lot of armored cars and light tanks in my build order i've produced 10 armored cars and 5 light tanks to start however you could uh, produce 10 armored cars and 10 light tanks with the combination of recruitment offices you're not gonna have the steel to research medium tanks at a2 and you will only start producing medium tanks and railroad guns in the mid game however the combination is very difficult so you're gonna have to judge if your economy is going to be able to support the boat because boat cost exclusively rare materials oil and metal in my build order i have produced boat i have produced 10 medium tanks and i have produced also a nice railroad gun stack you could produce up to 10 railroad guns but you're gonna have to stack them with 10 infantry and 10 anti-air of course in the railroad gun stack you're also gonna have to put an armored car as a scout the build order so far has one weakness i don't have a lot of units that counter heavy armor targets only my railroad guns counter heavy targets 
it, but your first railroad gun will roll out of production only at the end of day 5, and as railroad guns are really slow, you're gonna need a fast unit to counter heavy armored targets, and also those single runners that can take a country down very fast. So for this reason in the air tap, we are going to produce attack bombers, which get an additional access doctrine bonus, and then basically you'd have all the units that you need throughout the game. You don't need anything else, you should always try to limit your build order to 8 to 10 units so that you are able to upgrade those units throughout the game because well you only have two research slots right i'm not going to take an account the railroad guns because well railroad guns they you can't upgrade them so you only have six land units that you need to upgrade infantry anti-air armored cars light tanks rocket artillery and medium tanks in the naval tap you only have subs and in the air tap you have interceptors attack bombers and naval bombers that makes up for a total of 10 units however if you risk losing air dominance throughout the game from day six you can research rocket fighters access rocket fighters are amazing and you can upgrade them only to level two so you could really add them in the mix their range is a uh, smaller but they're super fast and really deal a lot of damage so if you risk losing air dominance you can always switch from interceptors to rocket fighters and it is actually all you need to be very efficient with the access build order in the late game however if you wish to do so you can make self-built stacks because well they're faster they're modernized right so as you already researched rocket artillery you already have a secret lab of your railroad guns you can easily opt for sp rocket artillery and you already have an ordnance foundry for your anti-air so you can also research sp anti-air you stack them together with armored cars and medium tanks and then you have a perfect highly mobile fast late game stack however it adds more more units in the equation and it will become increasingly difficult to keep all your units upgraded but it is a very viable strategy first thing you want to do is you want to go to the research tab and for access doctrine i want to start with armored cars so that's what i'm gonna do immediately as i am coastal next thing that i want to do is i want to research subs as also subs they get a doctrine bonus there we go ideally in the early game you can attack a player who is commitern because then you have a 25 percent damage output difference or you attack an allies doctrine player where you have a 15 percent damage output strength and 10% slower all right i have new notifications armored car research is completed so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna research in the tank branch light tanks let's go light tanks are uh, fast offensive units they are not the strongest tanks but because of their speed and low cost a good choice for rushing into enemy territory they are best used in fast attacks on light armored targets notably armored cars so now also going to produce armored cars and i'm gonna put two more in the queue as i have premium account as both my secret lab naval base and aircraft factory have been constructed i have all my construction slots that are open over here so i can build again the most advised would be to build economical buildings which are industry however they cost a lot of steel oil and rare materials they are rather expensive however as access doctrine is expensive i prefer a non not to build them in the early game but to pay them with the spoils of war so i have extra rural provinces that have one oil one steel one food and one goods which is perfect that covers all the resources i need for armored cars and also for light tanks i'm gonna be good for navy as well rare materials are going to become a problem later on so here in Tegucigalpa, i am going to construct an industry so that i can enhance my resource production of rare materials and as i produce a lot of manpower in my cities i am going to construct recruitment stations a level one recruitment office is going to increase the manpower with 35 percent so that is great so i'm gonna build a couple of those they cost a lot of goods so i shouldn't build too many neither but i'm gonna make at least two of them he has a, a couple of uh, hills but i have a lot of hills here in my territory they give artillery bonuses if he's gonna go for artillery i am not <laughs> going to like it artillery is a good early game unit but as it's expensive for access i decided 
decided against it for the build order to make it as it is slow and it doesn't bring out the best potential of Axis Doctrine which is fast and aggressive. As you can see my metal is going down fast as one armored car costs 810 steel and then also four recruitment offices. A level 2 recruitment office costs 550 steel so that's gonna be 1100 steel extra. I produce only 233 metal an hour and it takes three hours to produce an armored car. So as soon as my steel reserve is done I'm only gonna be able to produce one armored car every three hours with the steel production that I have. So I need to increase my steel production however I don't have any access to steel over here. It is a uh, rare materials and and goods and in Panama we have uh, goods rare material and oil so that is a big problem I have no early game access to steel and also to produce submarines I'm gonna need steel my submarine research has been completed now my light tank research is going to finish in uh, only a couple seconds there we go so now I am going to research interceptors so that I can protect my airspace I have decided to research naval bombers as naval bombers they don't need any steel to be produced and you're perfect to protect your coast. Submarines cost steel to produce 610. I'm gonna be in less of steel trouble in the start of the game. And now that I have researched light tanks, I might as well produce a couple of those. A couple of light tanks never hurt, so I'm gonna produce one light tank next. Alright, let's check the front reports. Got my first two armored cars that have been produced. Naval bomber research has been terminated. So I've got now my interceptors that are also researching. And then for so far my build order is complete. So I have researched interceptor, naval bomber, armored car, light tank, which enables me to unlock tomorrow the medium tank. And the naval tab I have researched submarine. And then tomorrow also rocket artillery it will be available. So I am perfect perfect on schedule nice the next morning i'm also constructing an airbase because then with my naval bomber i am able to patrol the panama channel and i can keep my core provinces safe so that's great got a second naval bomber over here in production also have a light tank in production i've got quite some units now i'm gonna select them all i've got now eight armored cars and three light tanks so i've made four armored cars and three light tanks i would like to make stacks with with uh, five light tanks, five armored cars, and then I can just rush everywhere. Great. So let's go to the province administration. Let's build industry over here. Build. There we go. Beautiful. And then also in La Ceiba, we are going to queue up industry. As soon as my recruitment center is done in one hour, 20 minutes, automatically my industry will be built. As I've received steel from the supply drop, I've decided to also produce a submarine. And I've already set the rally point to the Panama Channel. That is always a good idea to dominate that area. The next day all right we are day two first thing i am going to do is go to the research menu secret tab and i am going to research rocket artillery they need 17 hours cometary doctrine is only doctrine that can unlock it at day one so you need to be very careful of those let's select all my units to see what i have at the start of day two i've got now 10 armored cars got four light tanks so i have produced uh, six armored cars and uh, four light tanks two naval bombers and uh, one submarine. I have got in production another light tank so that's gonna make up for five light tanks and ten armored cars in total which is pretty good. I've got share maps for example with South Mexico who is also Axis but went for the classic strategy. He has made five artillery, one destroyer and two anti-tanks and now as you can imagine if you have a player that's going for artillery and anti-tanks that becomes a dangerous proposition for a player like me who has chosen for a more aggressive approach using armored cars and light tanks so i could still win but it would be a costly affair so i am taking a risk by choosing and not to produce artillery and only rocket artillery as it leaves me open for a ranged attack for the first 48 hours of the game as i'm struggling with both metal and oil i'm 
I'm not going to research medium tanks for now, even though I can start the research, you can see it's very expensive and you also need a tank plant level 2. First I need to be able to capture additional oil and steel provinces before I can do that and I need to hurry up because at day 4 I'm also going to be able to research railroad guns and I'm going to need level 4 secret lab for that as well gonna upgrade my industry to level 2 there we go there is one industry that is constructing I want to do the same in my oil there we go and then I want to do the same for the rare resources but unfortunately I don't have the oil to do so but so now I'm constructing both industry in my steel and oil province so that's pretty cool right my rocket artillery research is completed so it is time now to produce some I guess what I'm also gonna do now in the research tab I'm gonna already research infantry I've got now my first rocket artillery that has rolled out of production got a second one that is producing so that is really great I've also put an industry level 2 in the queue it's gonna start in uh, 12 minutes when I have the sufficient oil the next rocket artery will be available in four hours so now at the end of day two I have now in my possession a quite a large army I have made one interceptor five subs 11 armored cars, 5 light tanks, 2 naval bombers and 1 rocket artillery. Got now in total 68 units. That's pretty good. The next day. We are almost 5 hours in today, 5 now. And so I have actually upgraded quite some units. Let's see what I have of an army now. Got 14 infantry units that have already been upgraded. And as soon as all my infantry are upgraded, I'm gonna be able to upgrade also my submarines. Because in research, I have got now level 3 submarines and railroad guns. I have also been able today to already research level 1 anti-air. However, I still need to build over here an ordnance foundry in Belize City. Then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have enough food and manpower to upgrade also these last 5 infantry over here. And then all my infantry is going to be level 4 because I also need to upgrade my armored cars next as those are scout units if there are level 2 militia in the game I'm not gonna see them I want to be able to spot stealth units I need to upgrade my armored cars I would like to be able to upgrade soon my interceptors but I need a couple more I'd like to produce over here also attack bombers but as I've said before you only have limited resources I'm already happy that I have got 5 subs I've got the 10 rockets artillery that's uh, important got my 15 armored cars five light tanks but I also want to produce medium tanks I want to produce a lot but um, not everything is possible especially not if you want to produce and upgrade and construct buildings and research you can't do it all even if you play very aggressively and you conquer a lot of provinces conquer a lot of resources as a spoil of war even then access is a powerful doctrine but it is really expensive which makes it hard to play even if it's a doctrine that's popular with beginners personally I believe that the uh, commentary doctrine is much more beginner friendly but you need to know how to play that doctrine because you deal less damage especially compared to access doctrine right the next morning good morning I just woke up we are still day 5 another 8 hours 50 minutes to go next thing I want to do is I want to upgrade my final 5 infantry confirm there we go the research is also done for subs so I can promote these as well I don't have the food yet also my research for railroad guns is almost going to be terminated so I've got level 4 in Jordan step I have researched only anti-air I haven't produced any because I don't have an ordnance foundry as I don't have any food because I was upgrading infantry in the tank tab I'm now finally going to start the research for armored cars level 2 then at day 6 I can research level 3 and then at day 6 I'm also going to upgrade my armored cars so I'm good at that side air tab I have researched interceptors and attack bombers I'm not upgrading interceptors yet because I need more of them it is easier to produce level 1 units and then upgrade them because then you have lower building requirements in the naval tab I have now level 3 submarine which is pretty good 
and as it's day 5 and I'm upgrading my submarine to level 3, destroyers will not be able to see me anymore because those are level 2 only. At least for a day I'm gonna have an advantage and in the secret tab at day 6 I'm gonna have the possibility to upgrade my rocket artillery to level 2. As the railroad gun research will be terminated in only a couple of minutes I need to construct a level 4 secret lab. I did because I didn't have food. I'm gonna use one booster card. There we go. 12 hours and in 12 hours I am going to have sufficient resources to then also build the secret lab level 4. There we go. I have queued that up. The railroad gun research has been terminated so I'm also gonna launch the research for light tanks level 2. There we go. As I don't have a secret lab level 3 or 4 yet there's little use of producing railroad guns already because it would take too long to produce them. One day 16 hours. Instead now I'm going to build industry in my food city because I'm gonna need food to upgrade my subs, my rocket artillery for research and recruitment offices. So I am going to build industry now. I've got a bit better economy than I did before. I produce more steel and oil and rare materials but I lag behind on food a little bit. I'm also gonna build industry in my goods province because I'm gonna need goods to upgrade my armored cars, light tanks and to produce planes. So we're gonna build industry here as well built. I'm already gonna set the second level as well so that I can't forget about it. That's always a good idea actually. I'm gonna do the same over here. Level 2 in the queue. There we go. And then I can also check to produce tanks. I'm gonna produce my first medium tank now. Produce. That's beautiful. I'm gonna produce one in San Jose as well. There we go. Perfect. That's my first two medium tanks in production. Now I don't have any food left. I don't have any manpower left. So I I can't upgrade my subs yet and with the amount of food and manpower that I produce I'm gonna be able to upgrade a sub every hour so that's fine in five hours from now my subs will be all upgraded to level three so that's pretty good we are on track we are now 39 minutes only in day 7, so what have I done during day 6? Firstly, I have constructed a secret lab level 3, got level 4 in production. I've got my first railroad gun in production that is going to be done in less than 8 hours. I've also constructed an ordnance foundry in Belize city. Haven't produced anti-air yet, but I should do that soon. I'm researching armored car level 3 and rocket artillery level 2 and as I have less than 55 minutes to go for the armored car level 3 upgrade it is time to do the magic unit upgrade trick. Alright I'm producing another interceptor queued up 4 of those so that's good. Now I can put some medium tanks in the queue which is cool I can filter on tank plants. I can select them a boat and then if I want to produce something they're gonna be produced in both those cities. So I'm gonna produce two of them, two more in the queue and two more in the queue that makes a total of 10. 10 medium tanks, 10 interceptors I'm going to have. I'm gonna queue up a railroad gun although probably I won't have the resources for that. I'm gonna call it Axis Might. There we go. Confirm and then got my research level 2 rocket artillery that's gonna be done as well the next day. Alright, we are at day 8. Let's go to the research tree. In the tank branch we have got the light tank research that can get started. So I should probably do that. I am not going to research medium tank level 2 yet because first I want to have 10 medium tanks. In the air tab I'm already researching level 3 and then straight after I am going to research level 4 as well. I still need 9 hours so I'm gonna be able to launch it tomorrow morning. Also submarine level 4 is now available and in the secret branch I need to wait until day 14 before I can unlock a level 3 rocket artillery. However I would like to produce SP rocket artillery as they are faster and better but that is for the future. Let's select all my units. So I've got all my 32 infantry still they're level 4. The 6 anti-air I started with. Got 2 railroad guns now. 10 rocket artillery that I need to upgrade. Got 10 interceptors now that I also need to upgrade. Got 3 naval bombers. I'm gonna produce 2 more to have 5 of them. Got 5 subs level 3. Got 8 medium tanks now. I'd like to have 2 more. 15 
level 3 armored cars and 5 light tanks. So I've almost reached my goal. I want 10 medium tanks and then I can uh, upgrade those medium tanks. The 10 interceptors, I've got them. 10 rocket RTO to upgrade and I can focus on the production of railroad guns together with anti-air units. It's looking pretty good. I have got now 96 units and I have been very efficient in my upgrades. So that's really, really cool. I'm going to queue up a couple of railroad guns more. Got a medium tank in production in Guatemala. That will be number nine. Here we've got one in the queue. I need a bit more manpower. All right, looking good. The next day. All right, welcome back. We are now day nine. In six hours and 24 minutes, it's going to be day 10. What have I done in the research tab? I am now upgrading medium tank to level three. It's going to take 24 hours more. And as I've produced a lot of anti-air, I finally decided to do the upgrade to level two. And as soon as that is done i'm also going to do the level 3 upgrade because soon at day 10 i can even have a research level 4 if i wish to do so in the tank branch i've got now a light tank level 3 that has been completed i'm waiting on the manpower to be able to upgrade them and of course i've upgraded my armored cars to level 3 long time ago in the air tab i have finally finished the research interceptor level 4 so i'm gonna be able to upgrade those units as i have now five naval bombers i'm gonna be able to charge the research to go uh, to level 4 for the naval bombers and as I have now 10 interceptors 5 naval bombers I'm gonna be able to start producing also attack bombers in the naval tab I'm able to research submarine level 4 which I'm not going to do because navy is not a priority at this time and in the secret tab everything is still the same I've started to upgrading my uh, rocket artillery to level 2 in the near future I'd like to switch to SP rocket artillery but I can't do yet I'm I'm gonna select all my units 32 level 4 infantry 10 interceptors level 1 that are ready to be upgraded to level 3 5 submarines level 3 5 naval bombers got 10 medium tanks that i can upgrade 15 armored cars level 3 15 rocket artillery that can be upgraded got five light tanks that can be upgraded got now 16 anti-air and five railroad guns got one stack over here of rocket artillery that still needs to go back to the mainland but over here i am upgrading already five rocket artillery and i'm stacking all my units together in the railroad gun stack before i move north need a couple more artillery and infantry over here in the stack because when i split it up i'm gonna have 10 anti-air 10 infantry and five railroad guns which only leaves five infantry five anti-air and five rocket artillery and they need to be protected a little bit better so i'm making a couple more anti-air i have also invested a lot in economy i'm gonna go to province administration i'm gonna filter by morale you can see now that i have in all my core cities i have got level three recruitment stations got a sixth railroad gun in production got a naval base and my tank plants that are level two i am not going to upgrade my ordnance foundry i'm just gonna spam sufficient anti-air units before i upgrade them so that i don't have to produce air units anymore this way I saved the resources from upgrading the building and I've just attained enough manpower to produce a queued up anti-air that's pretty cool I've got level 4 industry in my steel province now I'm also going to construct a level 4 industry in my oil build and I want to do the same for my rare materials but I'm gonna lack the resources I like a thousand 150 metal so i'm gonna check on the market how much metal costs the metal is pretty cheap so that's cool i'm gonna buy 2000 metal except there we go so now i can build my industry build perfect i've also started developing my rural provinces got a level one industry now in my oil province and also here in my steel so once you have level three recruitment offices like i do in all my cities you can start developing rural provinces without resource production first the next day all right we are 15 minutes into day 10 the level 2 research for entire year is done so i can now research level 3 there we go and then tomorrow morning i'm gonna be able to launch level 4 but as i near the combat zone i might just upgrade to level 3 instead stopped producing units in my core provinces as i'm just gonna upgrade as i get faster from the front line as you can see economically i'm doing pretty fine on terms of 
military I have got 115 units many hours later I've produced another two railroad guns one over here one over here that makes now seven railroad guns my anti-air is uh, ready to be upgraded to level 3 however I have started the research level 4 because I'm not going to upgrade yet I want to upgrade my medium tanks first to level 3 because in only two hours the research will finish so first up upgrading medium tanks after that I want to upgrade my interceptors then I also need to upgrade those anti-air over here and then finally I also need to upgrade my five rocket artillery and once all that is done I want to upgrade the research for naval bombers that is long overdue and then finally I want to produce the attack bomber because I have no units that counter heavy armor and I really need something that counters heavy armor man that is a fact that is long overdue I only have railroad guns to counter heavy armor right now they deal 10.4 damage versus heavy armor however you cannot upgrade railroad guns so while other players can upgrade their heavy armor to add more HP railroad guns are gonna have more and more difficulty to kill those units as they're gonna be having more hit points the next day I am upgrading now my planes to level 3 and as soon as the upgrade is done they're gonna patrol over my units what is left to do is upgrading my 17 anti-air need uh, 8000 manpower to do that but they produce 680 manpower an hour so in here and 11 hours I will be able to upgrade all those units and then I need an additional 3415 manpower for the rocket artillery as soon as all those units are upgraded I'm going to attack all my units will be level 3 by then it's gonna be pretty amazing well not all my units my infantry are level 4 and my rocket artillery are level 2 I've got a research slot that is available which I should use I'm not gonna do the level 5 infantry upgrade I mean level 4 infantry is already pretty good and I can use my manpower elsewhere in the ordnance tab I only have anti-air all my medium tanks are level 3 now level 4 is not available yet in the air branch I am going to upgrade my naval bombers and in the naval branch I have sub level 4 available but I'm only going to upgrade them at day 14 so I can skip level 4 upgrade them straight to level 5 to save resources and in the secret branch I need to wait a couple more days to day 14 to get the level 3 research available two days later you're now day 13 in the infantry tab you get now also access to level 6 infantry which I haven't researched because I have other priorities ordnance tab level 5 anti-air only unlocks at day 14 at day 12 I have researched the upgrades for level 4 for armored cars for a simple reason uh, because armored cars are scouts so they can see stealth units and the militia level 4 is the highest level which is available at day 16 and the highest level 4 commandos is level 4 available at day 22 but so armored cars level 4 they can spot level 4 stealth units so then my scout units will be prepared the enemy will not be able to ambush me with stealth units same in the ordnance branch anti-tank level 4 was available at day 10 so I need to upgrade my armored cars if I don't want to get ambushed and in the tank plant tank destroyer level 3 is available but at day 14 level 4 will be available so it is a good idea always to upgrade your scout units and my main scout unit is the armored car in the air tab my other main scout unit is interceptors I have level 4 that's good for now soon I'm gonna be able to to research level 5 but it takes one day and two hours got naval bomber level 4 now already research is available as well but as you only have two research slots you need to uh, prioritize because my subs are only level 3 so they can be seen by destroyers level 3 which are available at day 6 so I'm running behind on that front and almost at day 14 I am going to be able to uh, research level 3 rocket artillery let's select all my units to see how I am doing 32 level 4 infantry 10 level 4 interceptors 5 subs level 3 5 naval bombers level 5 5 light tanks level 3 10 medium tanks level 3 8 railroad guns 10 rocket artillery level 2 I finally produced 10 attack bombers and currently I am upgrading my armored cars from
from level 3 to level 4 my armored cars will be upgraded in only 36 minutes so then I'm gonna be ready to attack in terms of economy I'm also doing pretty fine I've got now boats in my steel oil and rare provinces maxed out industry and all recruitment offices as well I only have industry level 2 in goods and food because I don't need a lot of goods and food for my build order and as I have finished upgrading my units now the time has come to upgrade certain military buildings to prepare the next step in my build order so I'm gonna upgrade here the aircraft factory build I'm gonna queue up the level 3 in Texas San Antonio I was lucky to get the level 2 aircraft factory so now I'm going to upgrade it to level 3 so I've been able to uh, produce fast 10 attack bombers 5 in San Antonio over here with the level 2 aircraft factory and I've produced also 5 over here in La Ceiba they only take 4 hours soon the attack bomb research will finish in only 4 hours 45 and then I'm gonna be able to upgrade them and move them to the front now that I have upgraded almost all of my units, I have produced all the units I wanted in my build order. And we are now day 13, we are approaching the late game. So I need some uh, better, faster units because artillery and railroad guns are pretty slow. And so as I want to be efficient and save resources, what I'm going to do is I am going to research SP rocket artillery. I'm going to start that right away. And so if you want to put them to good use, you can't let them slow you down by regular anti-air that is slow so i can also research sp anti-air level one which has a speed of 55 which is exactly the same as the sp rocket artillery they have a lot of hit points so they are very good so as soon as the attack bomber research is done i am going to start the research of sp anti-air sp anti-air are our tier 2 unit so i'm gonna need at least an ordnance foundry of level 2 and i need at least a secret lab of level 2 which I have because I have a secret lab level 4 and I'm not gonna produce railroad guns anymore because I'm too far away from the front line. So what I need to do next, I need to construct my ordnance foundry. So I'm gonna build that and I am going to queue up level 3. There we go. And I am going to stack the SP anti-air and the SP rocket artillery together with my armored cars because they're good against unarmored units. And I am going to stack them also with medium tanks as they are good against light armor and well very good overall so i'm going to need to upgrade also my tank plants so right now i have level 2 tank plants so i should already construct a level 3 but i don't have rare resources so i'm gonna go to the stock market first a few moments later there we go so that's all done i've already got enough manpower saved up as well to upgrade my attack bombers as soon as the research is done the next day day 14 means also that new research becomes available but the most important upgrade for day 14 is beyond doubt the rocket fighter level 2 access get a rocket fighter bonus i haven't been able to research or produce them yet but as a main has both tactical bombers and he also has rocket fighters i am going to be upgraded to research those as well research rocket fighter level 1 takes 20 hours and then rocket fighter level 2 takes one day and 10 hours i've got now my attack bombers that are level Level two. I could produce a couple more interceptors while I'm waiting to be able to make rocket fighters as well. Let's make a second stack of 10. That will be pretty good. It's gonna take a long time to produce them, but that's fine. I'm already gonna queue up level 4 aircraft factory should do the same over here aircraft factory there we go so right now i just need to wait until the research ends of sp anti-air and sp rocket artillery and then i'm gonna spam those units and keep them in the core provinces and maybe send some to central america because i've got a feeling i'm gonna need them those are gonna be my faster more powerful late game unit stacks i'm also gonna queue up the construction of level 4 tank plants i'm gonna add that in the building Thank you because as medium tanks are a tier 2 unit I can show you in research tanks medium tanks are a tier 2 unit so I need a level 2 tank plant that makes a tank plant level 3 for level 2 and a tank plant level 4 for level 3 tanks so I'm upgrading those now so that I can produce medium tanks and armor cars without a penalty three days later all right I'm back we are day 17 I'm researching now level 2 rocket fighters and level 2 SP rocket artillery which are the maximum you can get 
of them. I also have level 3 rocket artillery. I've upgraded those units. So at this point in the late game, you have chosen your strategy. You just need to upgrade your units up to the maximum level. So next up, if the game wouldn't have ended, I would uh, go for subs. Level 4 ins is good, especially as I'm making the switch to rocket fighters. Upgrade my medium tanks to level 5. Skip level 4, just like I did the, at the start of the game, upgrading from level 1 to level 3. With the research trick in origins, I should research level 3 SP anti-air so that also those I can upgrade because in my core provinces I have made a late game stack. Six armored cars so that I can detach one fast to capture a province to make my stack move faster. As you know we move only at 50% speed in enemy territory. That leaves me with a meat shield of five armored cars and five medium tanks. That's 10 in total optimal damage output. Got 10 SP anti-air optimal damage output against planes and I've got 9 SP rocket RT level 1 with the upgrade in research and with the tent that is being produced right now. As you can see I've got a large economy now due to my economy that is fully developed and the conquest. I've got a lot of victory points right now. I'm ranked first with 610 points. Got 329 provinces, 177 units. As mean had air dominance and rocket fighters. I made a second stack of 10 interceptors and I already have seven rocket fighters. As I've said, I've also upgraded my rocket artillery now to level three and those are pretty badass. They deal almost 12 damage versus unarmored units. So if you have 10 of those, that's 120 hit points gone in a single shot. If you do it in the hills or the mountains, that is 180 hit points. It adds up very, very fast. Upgrading units in the end game is important to add HP to the stack. You can see uh, 9 anti-air, 2 armored cars, 10 infantry and 10 rocket artillery. In a total they have 1265 hit points. You don't take that down fast. So what kind of units do I have now? I've barely lost units in the game. Still have all my starting infantry level 4 now. 10 level 4 interceptors, 10 level 2 attack bombers. Those are great against heavy armored units. 10 subs level 3, 18 anti-air level 4, 8 railroad guns, 16 armored cars level 4, 10 rocket artillery level 3, 15 medium tanks level 3, 10 SP anti-air, 9 SP rocket artillery, 4 level 3 light tanks, I've lost one unfortunately, 7 rocket fighters, 5 level 4 naval bombers and 1 enemy railroad gun that I have received from Florida. At this point it's fairly simple, you just continue to release units, you continue to upgrade, you can continue to invest in your core provinces, I haven't done it, I've got most maxed out where I needed it, built recruitment centers. I also inherited quite a lot of uh, enemy buildings. That's also interesting. I hope you have enjoyed this access build order. If you would have tried to use something differently, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you again for another video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications. I want to say a warm thank you to my members and elite members for supporting this channel.